In this activity, we're going to relate uh, transfer functions. We're going to talk about transfer functions. When I think of transfer functions, I really think of some conversion right here. A transfer conversion function, g of s, relates an input u of s to an output y s. You know, when I think about unit conversions, we do them all the time as chemical engineers. So here we have some function, transfer function g of s. This is our out. This is our in. And so if we have some u times our g of s, and see u of s as well, what that will equal is it will equal what happen, what comes out. It will equal our y of s. So we do this in the Laplace domain, and it usually allows us to be able to come up with an analytical solution where we give it our input and our transfer function, and we'll get out what our analytical result will be. Let's look at a few examples of this. First, we have our first order transfer function. The first order uh, differential equation we have right here is tau is equal to dy dt over dt minus y of t plus kp over u uh, times t minus the dead time. The first step here is to apply the Laplace transform to both sides. So we'll see this Laplace transform on the left hand side um, as well as the right hand side. And here we have this left-hand side term, so I should say we'll have three terms come of this. Um, we have this portion right here, this portion right here, and this portion right here, which we'll do separately. The first portion, one I'll call it, and then two, and then three. This is one, where we take this uh, differential term, and we say it's equal to this s, y of s minus y naught, and multiplied by the tau. The second right here is where we just convert this to the Laplace domain. And the third is where we convert this function u times kp to this function u where we have the delay of negative, um, negative theta p, which is the process time delay. And so if we put all them together, we get this form right here. So let's so go ahead and if we, um, if we take this form and we solve for y, we get, we get, um, go, ahead, go ahead and get the pen. If we find y of s, actually let's just do y s over u s. What that would be is we would say this right here is going to be tau p s plus 1 is going to be divided over this way and then us is going to be divided over here. So we have this kp e to the negative theta s all over tau p s plus 1. And that's what we can see right here. We just take what we want, what the result is, and divide it by that and then have everything else on the right hand side. So let's go ahead let's look at transfer function gain. The final value theorem gives a steady state gain kp of a transfer function by taking the limit as s approaches zero. So we take the transfer function g and we look at the limit as s approaches zero and that will be our gain uh, in steady state conditions. This is related to the final value theorem by considering the output response ys when the initial input is u of s 1 over s. So kp is going to be the delta y over delta u, and at steady state that's going to the limit as s goes to zero. And so that's the same as y over u as s goes to zero, or it's y over one over s as s goes to zero. So it's just important to know that we can also use that the um, one over s going to zero um, is the similar to the u of s um, relation in deviation variable form, and that's where we have the value divided or subtracted from its original value, so y minus the steady state value and u minus the steady state value, we can come up with this relation right here. If u and y are zero, then we just really just uh, this deviation of y delta y over delta u, that's really just y. And then we have this function right here where the limit as, is equal to s y s. The final value signal, y infinity, 
of a stable system with output y of s is equal to the limit as s goes to zero of s y of s. And that's the deriv derivation we just discussed. So that's some background that'll help you on tests. That'll help you when we discuss what's the what's the steady state value of this um, system, and you're given the Laplace transform. Finally, let's just discuss a PID equation briefly. Let's go ahead and look at um, we have our u. We have a couple different terms here, and let's think about what our um, our transfer function would be in terms of a PID controller. In and out is how I always think of these things. So what goes into a PID controller? Well, that's error. And what comes out? Well, that's the process. Um, actually, it's not the process variable, but it's the operating variable set point. So it's OP. Or in this case, it's going to be U at some time T. So what we really want is we want some function U of T over E. And that's going to be a P, uh, PID gain. So let's go ahead. If we have U of S, this is on deviation variable form to help make things make sense. U of S is equal to KC times the error plus KC over tau Y S E to the S minus KC tau D P V S. This is the process variable derivative right here. We think about this, what, um, we're going to go ahead and simplify and uh, we'll first say that we're not going to worry about uh, derivative control that d is equal to zero so we have error right here and error right here and this is us what we want we want u divided by error so we need to factor out the coefficients in front and we'll do that by saying e to the es times k c plus k c over tau i S. And then we'll factor that over, and that's how we get this right here. Then we can also factor out the KC, and um, what we'll do there, this is going to be KC plus KC tau IS. And so if we won't factor out the KC, it would be E S K C one plus one over tau I S. We'd like to have just one term rather than two, so what we do is we multiply by all of this by tau S over tau S. And that's where we come up with this relation tau I S plus one over tau S tau I S. So there you go, that's how the PID controller works. We'll look at that as far as uh, looking at the analytical solutions of controllers soon. But then we just want to discuss combining transfer functions. If we have two inputs here shown as x1 and x2, and both those go through two gains, what would our output ys be? Well, think about this. Let's think about what the intermediate is real quick. Our intermediate would be that we would have two outputs here. This would be y1 and this would be y2, and ys then would be y1 plus y2. So if we were to have some function y of s, what we can think of it as, remember each of these have gains, and so y1 is equal to x1 g1, and y2 is equal to x2 g2. So if we add them together, y is equal to x1g1 plus x2g2, the combination of the two signals. So if, they, uh, if, they're add, if they're added together, then the two signals can be added. If they are in series, then what will happen is that um, the gains will be multiplied. And we can think of this again, think of this as x2, but another way of thinking of this x2 is thinking of this as y1. So x2 is equal to x1 g1. And then ys is equal to, we'll say y is equal to x2 times g2. But our x2, this right here, 
is equal to right here x1 g1 so it comes x1 times g1 times g2 and so if we were to have some gain uh, I don't gain not some gain of the total system it would be g1 times g2 this portion right here so let's go ahead we're gonna look at how we do this in MATLAB here we have um, the analytic and numeric response to an input that step and ramp function. So we'll go ahead and we know that the um, the gain is 5 times s plus 1 over s plus 3 squared. We'll notice that it says the system transfer function is a stable system with two poles, denominator roots, and one zero, numerator roots. We talk about stability, and you may have seen in your PID controllers that sometimes, depending on what we set the PID controller to, it diverges. It, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't matter what happens within the system, it's just going crazy. And so we, uh, we notice this, especially within our, these transfer functions, they help us determine what values of our controller are acceptable where they don't diverge. And so that's what we call these stable systems. Well, let's look at this real quick. In the bottom, if we, we know that if we ever have a denominator that's equal to zero, our system will go to infinity. It can't really handle that. So what we do is we think about each of these. We have one zero. That's where the numerator is equal to zero. And we have two poles where the num denominator is equal to zero. Let's just briefly discuss both of those. When would s plus three squared be equal to zero. Well, that would be when s is equal to negative three. Or, um, well, let's do it like this. So, s plus three is equal to negative three. Or, um, I'm trying to think if there's an imaginary root there. I don't think so. So it would have to be equal to negative 3 for both those poles. So let's go ahead. That's just a stability. Let's look into just simulating this now. We're going to work on, um, on using symbolic math within MATLAB. So let's go ahead. We're just going to introduce some symbolic variables with this sims argument. If you don't have your symbolic toolbox, you'll have to install it quickly. That's not a problem. So we'll go ahead and we'll initialize these variables as symbolic variables equal to their names. The first thing we'll do is we'll create a function for our step up, which is going to go up to 2 at 1 second. And then our ramp down begins at 3 seconds. So our ramp down is going to be negative 1, that's the slope. It's going to be uh, over s squared because that's what a ramp function is. And then this exponent, negative 3s, hopefully you're understanding now that's the time delay. And then the ramp down ends at 5 seconds, so we need to cancel that out. So we do positive, since the other one we're canceling out is negative, and it happens at 5 seconds. Our transfer function is 5 times s plus 1 divided by s plus 3 squared. And our responses are going to be the transfer function multiplied by the input. So we'll go ahead and we'll calculate then the inverse Laplace of... Um, both the input and output of functions. And then we'll go ahead and we'll substitute numbers and do the analytic solution. So we'll go ahead, we'll run that math. And if we, we just expand here, you can see on the right hand side, we'll come along and you'll be able to see that u1, for example, is equal to just what we thought. It's just a nice, nice math script, which is nice. G similarly y1 and y2, you'll notice that it's the transfer function multiplied by u, and it's pretty clear. Then we have y1, y2, and y3. Our u's and our y's are still, um, how can I say, they're still analytical solutions. They're still symbolic solutions. You'll see this heavy side. That heavy side is a, another way of saying the, um, the step function. So they have the step function and they have the inverse Laplace transform. What we really want is we want a numeric solution. And so we'll go ahead, we solve it, and we, su we substitute numbers into this symbolic solution. We do so by saying each of these for each value within u, 
where u is a, an array of u1, u2, and u3, we're going to go from 0 to 100 and say that usi, which is this array we've got to calculate the um, numeric values, is, um, is equal to usi plus the substituted value of u, which is either u1, u2, or u3, where t is substituted in for tmi. Basically what that's doing is it's taking one of these functions here for u, and we substitute in a numeric t for this symbolic t, and we evaluate it. The same thing happens for our different y functions, y1, y2, and y3. At each point we substitute in a numeric solution, or a numeric value, for t, in place of that symbolic t function. And you'll see there we go. So let's think about this. As t turns on at 1, and then slowly ramps down at 3 to 5, we see this jump up at 1 in our system, and then the output stays rather steady, and then it goes down during t equals 5, and then progresses back toward that steady state value of 0. So that hopefully gives you an introduction to the um, to Laplace transforms and how they're used in transform functions. Uh, symbolic solutions are a great way to see um, and calculate the analytic solution. Well, you sometimes want to know the numerical solution, though, and so it's important to know things such as the substitute function and how we use the Laplace function or some of the symbolic math.